We've got ourselves a little dilemma for tonight in MLB DFS because there is a pitcher, Lance Lynn, coming off an injury who is $5,500 on FanDuel and facing the Tigers and stretch out enough where I think he'll be going 90 plus pitches for tonight. But also we've got really good guys outside of that. Sandy Alcantara, Aaron Nola, Alec Manoa, all in spots where I'd be willing to use them. The question is, can we trust Lynn enough coming off that injury to use him over these other really good guys? And I think I have my personal answer, but it's a lot to break down. We're going to break down what information you need to make that decision for yourself and hopefully put you down the right path towards winning some money for tonight in MLB DFS. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com. Here to break down Monday's 10 game main slate with locks up for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for today. The only weather note is not a rain one. It is in St. Louis for the Cardinals and the Pirates. Not rain, but it is extremely hot. Uh, first pitch temperature is projected at 98 degrees. That is absolutely a bump up to batters in that game. Problem is... Not really sure how to handle the two offense. We'll talk about that uh, later on. But definitely give a boost up to batters in St. Louis for Cardinals and Pirates due to how warm it is there for today. We'll break down the pitching preview and break down that key dilemma with Lance Lynn in just one second. But first, the NBA Finals are in full swing, and so is your chance to score big at FanDuel Sportsbook. Throughout the NBA Finals, FanDuel is giving new customers $200 in free bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Bet the money line, point spread, player props, and so much more. Plus, you can combine your bets for an even bigger payday with the same game parlay. If you haven't tried FanDuel, now is the perfect time to give it a shot because the only thing sweeter than watching the finals is cashing in on all the action. Make every game feel like Game 7 with FanDuel Sportsbook. FanDuel, official partner of the NBA. Disclaimer, must be 21-plus in select states. First online real money wager of at least $5. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is non-withdrawable free bets that expire 14 days after receipt. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-9789 or in West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Pitching preview for this Monday main slate, Sandy Alcantara is the highest salary pitcher on FanDuel checking in at 11-3 with Alec Manoa at 10-8. Aaron Nola facing Alcantara is 10-2. Yu Darvish, revenge game against the Cubs at 97. Josiah Gray is 92. Merrill Kelly checks in at 91 with Ian Anderson, Christian Javier, Alex Wood, Chris Flexen, Brady Singer, and Taylor Hearn as the others at $8,000 or higher. Now, we will discuss Lit because I think that he is worth discussing for today and totally okay with using him. But I don't want him to be my highest exposure pitcher. I want my two highest exposure pitchers to be in the exact same game. Aaron Nola versus Sandy Alcantara. I'm going to favor Nola. So I'll talk about him first. And I'll get to Alcantara next. And then we'll talk about Lance Lynn as the value play for today. Nola, obviously, he's facing Alcantara. is facing the Marlins. And they're pretty solid offense. But not a low strikeout one. Which means they're not an offense we need to avoid from a DFS perspective. And Nola is pitching really well right now. He threw eight shutout innings last week, and that came on the road. We've seen Nola struggle on the road in the past. Back at home now, not that he needs that boost to begin with, because for the full season, Nola has a 2.74 skill interactive ERA with a 29% strikeout rate. Both of those are the best marks on the entire slate. 3.4% walk rate ranks second. The batted ball data for Nola is not as elite now as it was at the beginning of the year, but as he showed last week, that is not impacting his upside. The strikeouts are a matter, and he's gone eight plus innings twice in the past three starts. He had 10 strikeouts in one of those, so I love his upside. I will be highest on Nola among everybody on the slate. I will have more Nola tonight than I have Lance Lynn because I'm more convinced he can get me eight, stri- eight innings, eight strikeouts than I can with Lynn. 
So to me, Nola is worth that high salary at 10-2 for tonight. Now, Alcantara's 11-3. That's pretty high. But I have Alcantara right behind Nola and in the exact same tier as him. Alcantara has been great all season long, but he's been getting even better recently. His worst pitch, according to Baseball Savant, is the four-seam fastball. The ex-woba against that is 340. That's his only pitch with an ex-woba against it above 300. Well, we've seen Alcantara recognize this, and he's throwing that, that pitch less now. Over the past six starts, the four-seam fastball usage for Alcantara is down to 22.7%. It was 30.9% before that, and it's boosting Alcantara to an even higher level. In those six starts, we've seen Alcantara allow three total earned runs, which is absurd. He has finished nine innings twice in that span, and he went eight in two others and has seven in all six starts. It is unreal how good Sandy Alcantara has been. He's doing, getting the, these this volume with good efficiency, a 2.89 skill interactive ERA, a 26% strikeout rate, very good bat at ball data. And the Phillies, not the world's worst matchup, even if they're not a great one. Their WRC plus against righties is 106 with a 23% strikeout rate. So that's why I'm willing to put Alcantara in no list here, despite his high salary, despite being on the road, despite facing the Phillies, and despite having Lance Lynn, as an alternative at a very low salary. The key reason I like Nola more is that he's at home. That's honestly it, because I have Nola projected for 7.5 strikeouts. I've got Alcantara at 7.3. Everybody else is below 6.7. So for me, at least, they're the clear top two pitchers of the night. They're in a tier of their own, and I will handle them as such, putting Nola a smidge above Alcantara. So to me, it's Nola 1, Alcantara 2, I think Manoa is very much in play, and we'll talk about him in things to watch. But first, let's talk about Lance Lynn, because it is cheating a bit to have him at $5,500. Um, you're going to see a lot of chatter about him on Twitter for today, which means he's likely to be popular, and I would rather spend up than use him, assuming that high popularity, but... I do think that he's, I'm going to use him. Realistically, I'm going to use Lance Lynn for tonight. So let's talk about him at $5,500. This is the first start of the year for Lance Lynn, but he is stretched out. He went 79 pitches in his final rehab start. And with how much of a tank that guy typically is from a pitch count perspective, I think it's fair to expect him to go more than 90. I've, I haven't projected at exactly 90, but not shocked at all if he does go well beyond that. Lynn did not pitch well in his rehab start. He let up seven earned runs in his final outing with not a lot of strikeouts. It's a question of how hard he was throwing down there. And the matchup here is so nice. Facing the Tigers, who have a 70 WRC plus against righties with an 099 ISO, and a 24% strikeout rate. They are a truly hideous team. So I, I did really want to avoid Lynn in this section just because I expect him to be very popular for tonight. But the matchup is just so good. I have a low strikeout rate projection from a talent perspective in there for Lynn because didn't do a whole lot. His rehab starts, you know, he's older, stuff like that. But even with that low projection, even with his uh, pitch count projection at 90, he still gets to 5.4 strikeouts. That's that's just like, it's just so many things working in his favor that it's hard to keep things low for him. For a guy whose salary is 55, 5.4 strikeouts is awesome. So I'd like to avoid him. I really would. I think it'd be smart to do so. And if you are playing single entry, I think there is no shot you touch Lance Lynn in that format. But realistically, for multi-entry, I'm going to use him. Too good of a spot not to. I just would say it's wise to go elsewhere. But knowing myself, knowing realistically, I'm going to use him. So for single entry, if I touch Lynn, I'm going Nola or Alcantara there. Uh, but for multi-entry, yeah. You kind of got to do it because it's not a whole lot of choice for today. So for me, it's Nola 1, Alcantara 2, Lynn the value play, and we'll talk about Manoa in things to watch. First, though, let's go to stacks and talk about the Astros because I have unsuccessfully stacked the Astros a bunch recently, which is very frustrating, but I'm going to give it a go once again tonight. And I'm going to hope for better results this time around. The Astros are facing Taylor Hearn, who's not a big strikeout guy. He has a 4.60 skill interactive ERA, with a 20% strikeout rate, which means he's letting up a healthy number of balls in play. 43% of those balls in play have been hard hit. 36% have been in the air. So it's not a huge fly ball rate, but it's also, he's not a big ground ball guy, is what I would say. And that combination of a low strikeout rate and a lot of hard contact has gotten Hearn in some trouble. 
His ERA is 5.40. His expected ERA is 5.71, which does include some struggles against Houston this year. He's faced him twice, and he led up four earned runs in both those. One of those was at home, which is where he's at tonight, and one of those was on the road. We've seen Hearn struggle beyond that, too. So not in a great spot right now. He has it had issues against this specific lineup, which ups my confidence in the Astros, even though they have not been kind to me of late. So the Astros, to me, are the number one stack of the day. And I think we need to view Jose Altuve as a main priority here. He has a 378 ISO against lefties this year. He has a 44% fly ball rate, a lot of hard contact. And last year, you know, it's it, you can look at the small sample against lefties this year, but even last year, a 176 ISO, and you know what he brings to the table beyond that. So if you're looking at prioritization on this Astros team, I would say Altuve one, Bregman two, probably looking at the lefties after that. Honestly, even though it is a lefty, I would go with uh, Alvarez and Tucker at that point, and then you can get to the value plays. And I think that's the key thing here with the Astros is if you want to get to Alcantara, you can lean on Jerry Pena. You can lean on Yuli Gurriel, Jose Siri, Chas McCormick, whoever winds up playing, you can be okay with those guys and feel fine about it. So they're easy to stack with Alcantara for today. I think that does make the Astros the number one stack. Number two, let's talk here about Josiah Gray. He's been getting better. Uh, he's let up just two earned runs in his past three starts. But I still think we should stack the Braves against him tonight. One reason to buy into Gray is his pitch mix, because he's been using his forcing fastball less the past six starts, which is definitely a wise thing, a very good thing for Gray, because it is a truly awful pitch. And using it less has led to improvements, because... In that six-start sample, Gray has a 4.02 skill interactive ERA. Strikeout rate's 26%. That's that's awesome. That's actually, that's the same strikeout rate as Sandy Alcantara in his six-start sample. But Gray's letting up a ton of fly balls. He has a 51% fly ball rate in that time. And that's okay against bad teams. It is less okay against a team like the Braves. We did see Gray make two starts against the Rockies and the Reds. He held the Marlins in check, and they're a pretty solid offense, but... The Dodgers and Astros torched him, both of those games in Washington, and he let up three home runs in both those games. So when Gray is facing good, powerful offenses, things can still go awry, and he gets that for today. A 176 ISO for the Braves against righties, a 40% fly ball rate. The Braves will strike out, so it's not outrageous to give some thought to Gray as a pitcher, but I do think the best move is to stack the Braves here and bank on the fly ball rate that Gray allows. I do want to favor the two lefties within this stack. I say two, I guess you could include uh, Harris in there as well, but the two lefties for tonight, uh, Olsen and always a switch hitter. Those are the primary guys for me as far as where I want to go here because Gray gets just a 19% ground ball rate when he's facing lefties. So Matt Olsen, top priority for me. Ozzy Albies has been improving recently. He's $3,200. Not totally opposed to Harris at, at 23. If you want to go down there, I think that's totally fine. Honestly, he's going to bat ninth, but like, you know, he's pretty good in triple A. So I would say start with Olsen and Albies. Consider Harris if you want to, and then get to the righties because you lefties, I think, do have a big edge against Gray versus what you get out of the righties. I think the next best, best stack is the Blue Jays. They're facing Kyle Bradish, which is a pretty good spot. And honestly, with their salaries, you can make it work pretty easily. So it, it may sound like a lot to, to stack the Astros, the Braves, and the Blue Jays, but all these teams have mid-range plays and some value plays to make things work. So I think you, even if you're going Alcantara, you can make it work with the Jays, Astros, and Braves. And if you go with Lynn, you can just load up on the really good guys there. So that, that's a positive as well. So the Blue Jays for me, the third rank stack, and Bradish is a lot similar to Gray, where he has a lot of potential because he can get strikeouts, but just letting up so much hard contact. In the eight starts, Bradish has let up a 44% hard hit rate, and that's really erased the good in his profile. His ERA is 6.45, his expected ERA is 6.05, and it's happened even against some lesser teams. The Blue Jays are not that. They've been getting a lot better against righties. Uh, they're healthier now than they were. Their WRC plus against righties is up to 105, and they don't strike out much, which is a good thing against a guy like Bradish who can get some strikeouts. 
So there is some risk here because Bradish gets strikeouts similar to the Braves. You know, there is risk in that profile because the opposing pitcher can get strikeouts. But I still think it's worth that risk for all the hard contact as a trade-off here. So the Blue Jays, to me, solid as a number three stack. And the key guy to that stack is Teoscar Hernandez. He has just three home runs so far this year, but which is super disappointing. But his ISO the past two weeks is 244. He has a 51% hard hit rate. He has eight barrels across a two-week sample, which is pretty nuts. So I think Teoscar is coming around. Uh, he gives you great upside for just $2,700. I'm not sure I'll have a Blue Jays stack without Teoscar Hernandez for tonight. He's just he's hitting the ball too hard right now. I think eventually we'll see those dingers come, and they could come in bunches. So Teoscar Hernandez, rock-solid option of a Blue, Jay, Blue Jays stack for tonight. Let's stick with the Blue Jays' move to things to watch and talk about Alec Manoa. I do like him. I'm just not as into his strikeout upside as that of Nola and Alcantara. Manoa is projected for 5.6 strikeouts, which is actually in line with Lynn. Orioles, not some pushover matchup, so I'm not opposed to Manoa, but I think I'd rank Lynn higher than Manoa. That might be stupid, but they also don't give Manoa the longest leash. Like He's gone 100, I think, once so far this year, so... I think it's to me, Nola 1, Alcantara 2, Lynn 3, Manoa 4, and I might not get to Manoa within my player pool for tonight just because I want to have a lot of Nola and Alcantara. I'm not sure what to do with the Cardinals. They've got amazing weather for hitting, so I, I do want to stack them from that perspective. But they're facing Mitch Keller, who has struggled overall this year, but he's added a sinker in his uh, three outings ago. He's added a sinker then. And since that time, he's held the Dodgers under a 20% hard hit rate. His hard hit rate overall, I think, is around 23%. It's pretty weird. I will probably still stack the Cardinals just due to weather or due to the fact that, you know, it's a small sample for Keller excelling, but it is very possible he has found something with that pitch. So just keep that in mind. If you want to stack the Cardinals, Keller's been doing some fun stuff recently. So the success he has had might not be totally fluky. I do think you can stack both sides of the Twins and Mariners here. Twins are facing Chris Flexen, Mariners facing Chris Archer, and both those guys have gotten some good results this year, but the peripherals are rough on both as well. They let up a lot of balls in play, let up a lot of fly balls, so I think that having exposure to both these sides is the way to go. I think that, to me, I'd rather commit to three pitchers, building around Nola and Alcantara primarily, and then diversify more of my stacks. Because the Twins and Mariners are both fully viable. The Cardinals are, Cardinals are viable too. So I'm going to have a tight core pitcher, diversify a bit more of my stacks, and um, hope that I can just hit the right combination at some point within that four tonight. Let's finish up here with some dinger calls. And they were kind of telegraphed based on uh, the effusive praise I had for these guys earlier on. The boring one is Matt Olson. Just, I think, targeting lefties against Gray, giving me... Number of fly balls he lets up, probably going to be a good strategy over the long run. So Matt Olson to me, the top play uh, for homers for today. The fun one is Teoscar Hernandez. I feel like he shouldn't count as fun because like I have this such such a positive view of Teoscar. But again, three home runs so far this year. He's $2,700, so I guess it sounds like it's probably a good one to go with. So the home run calls for today, Matt Olson and Teoscar Hernandez. That is all that we have here for today on the Solo Shot. Once again, give some thought to Lance Lynn. Give some thought to how you want to handle him. Assume he will be popular just because he was getting buzzed on Twitter even last night. So you're going to have to deal with that if you want to use him. I'm still okay with it, but I would try to have more exposure to Nola and Alcantara personally just because that's the way I want to play things. Do not forget to subscribe to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast scene wherever you get your podcasts, because coming up later on today, we're going to have a U.S. Open PGA DFS preview podcast via myself and Brandon Ganula breaking down the top plays for this week in golf's third major of the year. You can find that by searching for the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to get you set for Tuesday's Slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.